management, we said that there's four key functions. Go ahead. Just run. It was kind of abstract, but um, how, how I remember it is thinking that you're managing a company called Plot, planning, meeting, or an organization and sort of Plot. Right. Or P-Lot. Right. Like management. That's a good, um, a good honor. Everybody get what uh, this one is saying? P-L-O-C. Planning, leading, organizing, and controlling. Right. It's good. Those are the four key functions that managers are responsible for. And we're interested in the effectiveness and the efficiency of our management team and our operations. The effectiveness is the degree to which the goals are being achieved, and the efficiency is how well we're using the resources to achieve those goals. So we need to look at effectiveness and efficiency. Effectiveness is how well we're achieving those goals. So if we said we were going to increase sales by 20%, were we successful in doing that? Did we increase sales at all? Was it by 10%? Was it by 12%? That's what we need to determine. Ultimately, Right, taking into account the planning, the leading, the organizing and controlling, ultimately the biggest challenge for managers is getting work done through others. That's what we need to do as managers. And it's not easy. In the workplace, there's a great deal of diversity. Religious diversity, ethnic diversity, racial diversity. We have to be sensitive to the fact that we need to treat everybody fairly, but manage everyone differently. Does that make sense? So we're going to treat everyone the same. Everybody's got to be treated fairly, but different things are going to motivate different people. So when we're managing people, we have to take that into account. So for example, for some people, getting a salary increase is important. For others, it's getting a higher job title. So some people would be happy to take a position as a VP, right, as a vice president, even if their salary isn't increasing. In an organization, there needs to be both procedural justice and distributive justice. Procedural justice means that there's a process in place to accurately evaluate people's performance. So the performance of individuals is systematically determined. It's not random, it's not arbitrary. There is a very methodical, systematic way for evaluating performance. Now that's only part of the challenge. Most companies have achieved that level of justice which is a procedural justice. Where most companies have problems is with distributive justice. That means that the rewards are fairly distributed throughout the organization. So that means those who deserved a 15% salary increase got it. So that's only interesting that you evaluated their performance accurately. That's where it starts. But having done that, that means that this person <coughs> needs to get a 15% salary increase, this person 10, this person 5, and 
the rest of these people get no salary increase. That would be an example of distributive justice. So that the rewards were fairly distributed, as opposed to everybody got a 3% increase. You get it? You want to give another round 3% just to keep up the inflation? Some companies don't even give that. So that would be the argument on behalf of employees. So when a company says, things are bad, nobody's getting a salary increase, and then employees would argue, well, if inflation is 2% or 3%, not only aren't we getting a salary increase, but we're actually earning less <laughs> than last year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's different types of motivation. There's intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is when we're motivated by completing the task, right? That we find it rewarding simply by completing the task. So it's inherent in the job or the task that we're completing. That's intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation are factors that are external to the job. So, for example, bonuses or the salary or benefits. Those are other factors that could influence somebody's level of motivation. Expectancy theory is an important theory as it relates to the level of motivation. There's three components. There's expectancy, instrumentality, and valence. What's the difference? What's the difference between those three components of motivation? All three levels of this motivational theory need to be in place in order for people to be motivated. So what it says is that people have, the employees have got to believe that their effort is going to achieve the desired results. And those results are going to result, are going to um, provide certain rewards. The people in the organization have got to believe that that's the case, that their effort is going to result in performance, that performance is going to result in rewards. And those re rewards are going to be desirable. So effort equals performance. That's expectancy. Instrumentality is performance equals rewards. And valence is that those rewards are important to you as an employee. That is something that you care about. So if it's, for example, they say, well, your reward is if you could produce 500 units per day, you'll get two weeks extra vacation. And you say, I'd rather have $10,000. So if they're giving you a reward that's not desirable by you, right, it'll be different for Constantine, it'll be different for Anel, it'll be different for Murad, very 